Hello, I'm Dr. Marianne Teitelbaum, and today we're going to talk about Hashimoto's. Why? Because 14 million Americans are suffering from Hashimoto's. It's an autoimmune disease affecting the thyroid gland. Now, less than 100 years ago, it was rare, but nowadays it's the most common autoimmune disease in the developed countries. So, what has happened over the last 100 years to have created this epidemic? Let's find out. And why are the standard treatments of supplying thyroid hormone not working? Let's find that out as well. First, you should know that technically Hashimoto's isn't a disease of the thyroid gland per se, but more a problem with a misguided immune system attacking the thyroid gland. Here's how it works. The immune system attacks the thyroid gland, which can no longer now make its hormones because of that attack on it. Just knowing that little bit of information, what do you think needs to be done? If you have good common sense, something would tell you that you need to fix the immune system so that it stops leveling its attacks on the thyroid gland. But unfortunately, doctors pretty much just prescribe thyroid hormone and they leave it at that. Then they proceed to watch the thyroid hormone levels in the blood work, which of course will be okay because the person's taking the thyroid hormone. But what they fail to do is to examine the immune system by looking at the antibodies in the blood work that the thyroid's producing to make sure that the immune system stops attacking the thyroid gland. All the thyroid hormone prescriptions do is to shut down the thyroid gland because it's no longer called upon to make its hormones. So it kind of goes into hibernation. It even can disintegrate. So do you see the problem in treating Hashimoto's in this way? The immune system normally has the intelligence to know what to attack. It attacks viruses, bacteria, other pathogens, but it's not supposed to attack pollen, food like gluten and dairy, or your own body, which is what an autoimmune disease is. But if anything disrupts the normal immune function, then all bets are off and your immune system can spiral out of control attacking you and in the case of Hashimoto's, your thyroid gland. Okay then, let's roll up our sleeves and see the correct way to tackle this problem. We have to keep working our way backwards to get to the root of the problem. We can't just treat the symptom of the thyroid. So first we want to ask, what is the immune system? That would be good to know because we have to start our approach from here. And, and don't forget, we want to fix the immune system so it stops attacking the thyroid gland. So basically, there's three parts of the immune system that need attention. The friendly bacteria in the gut, the liver, and the bone marrow. Let's take a look at each one individually to see what has happened to it and how to fix it. The friendly bacteria in the gut are one of the stabilizing forces of the immune system. They need to be growing properly your whole life in the intestines. Otherwise, if their numbers get depleted, the immune system can lose its intelligence and go into the intact mode. Many pharmaceuticals like antibiotics, birth control pills, steroids, acid reflux medicines, immunizations, and many other drugs can destroy this friendly, very delicate bacteria. So that's now the first strike against the immune system. Second, nowadays the liver, which is the main filter of toxins, is overwhelmed with hundreds of these toxins going through it every day. Just like alkaline rain, which picks up air pollution on its way to earth, turning it into acid rain, the liver gets overheated from holding on to too many toxins from overuse of pharmaceuticals, combined with a bad diet, and exposure to environmental pollutants. So as it heats up from all these acid toxins that are continually going through it, it starts to heat up itself, and it's this heat in the liver that can spill out into the whole physiology. That's because the liver makes the blood from the food you eat. And it pushes the immune system into the attack mode. This is why, for instance, food allergies are so prevalent nowadays when they were pretty rare over 100 years ago before this high reliance on pharmaceuticals combined with the overprocessing of the fast foods. And finally, the third part of the immune system is the bone marrow. This is where the immune system cells are actually born, which are the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets. The ancient doctors of India who cognized Ayurveda warned in their textbooks that if toxins were to get into the bone marrow, 
autoimmune diseases could result. The problem nowadays is that so many pharmaceuticals, especially immunizations and many others, do actually arrive in the bone marrow. So does the air pollution. Every day when you step outside and breathe in the air pollution, it goes straight into your bone marrow. The same is true for many new environmental toxins found in plastics, industrial cleaning agents, pesticides. Now, how do we know all these things? Because in Ayurveda, the practitioners are trained in very advanced pulse diagnosis, where you can actually feel the heat in the liver and the toxins in the bone marrow. You can feel the difference between a chemical toxin and a heavy metal. And we can even track where those various types of toxins are sitting in the physiology. Where are they? In the brain, in the liver, in the bone marrow. See, so that's a wonderful thing to have access to. So now you can see the answer to treating Hashimoto's correctly is to regrow the friendly bacteria in the gut, clean and cool down the liver, and clean the bone marrow. But at the same time, you have to focus on these three parts of the immune system, you also have to support the thyroid gland. We use some herbs, and as with any disease, you always have to learn how to eat healthy, follow a good daily routine of going to bed and waking up early, and learn correct Ayurvedic detox. We don't usually learn too much detox in America. But you have to do all these things while at the same time keeping the liver cool, or else your attempts will backfire on you pushing you more and more into autoimmune. So what does that mean and, and how do we do it? It's a little difficult to give our protocol treatments for treating Hashimoto's since everyone comes to it with a different angle that needs to be treated. I wrote a book called Healing the Thyroid with Ayurveda, which gets into much more detail, but I can outline for you basically here how it works. So first of all, when we learn the herbs in Ayurveda, the first thing we learn is, are they cooling or heating? This information definitely comes in handy when treating an autoimmune disease like Hashimoto's because you don't want to unwittingly heat up the liver as you give your herbs. In my practice, we deliver the herbs in two ways. One is by giving homeopathic liquid versions of the herbs, which are dripped into alkaline spring water, which you would sip on throughout the day. So they slowly come into the liver. These homeopathic versions of the herbs just contain the intelligence within the fibers of the herbs without having to deal with all the side effects of some of these heating herbs. So for example, the two best herbs it turns out for the thyroid gland are shilajit and ashwagandha. These are very famous in Ayurveda, but both are extremely heating. So in this case, we have to give the herbal nectar drops, which don't contain the crude herb. Keep in mind, Everything you swallow goes through the liver, and you don't want to heat it up further. Since the nectar drops are vibrational, they immediately are absorbed into the whole cellular system and the gaps in between the cells without having to be digested by the liver, like the crude herbs found in herbal tablets and herbal teas. Now, the second way we give the herbs is transdermally. That means through the skin. And from the skin, they go directly into the bloodstream and bypass the liver. So that's in another ingenious method. We teach our patients a good alkaline diet. We give them herbs to clean the bone marrow, such as Gaduchi Sattva, which cleans, by the way, both the liver and the bone marrow while keeping the liver cool. That's the trick. So this one herb is amazing for any autoimmune disease because it's the only herb that we know of that has its effects on two whole parts of the immune system, the liver and the bone marrow. This is why it was my teacher, Vaidya Ramakant Mishra's favorite herb, even though he had an encyclopedic knowledge of over 700 herbs. I'll definitely make one whole video to describe why this is considered one of the most divine herbs discussed in the ancient Ayurvedic text, so stay tuned for that. We also give good probiotics, or if they cannot tolerate them, we teach the patients how to regrow the friendly bacteria by making things like yogurt, buttermilk, lassi, and variations of these if they're allergic to cow's milk. I have an hour-long lecture on my website on the friendly bacteria, so you can learn about the best company to use to regrow your friendly bacteria. Not all companies work, 
the cultures are pretty much dead in most of the companies. So just Google my name, Dr. Marianne Teitelbaum, go to my website and click on classes. Then click on the class on the friendly bacteria. The lectures are free and you're invited to listen to the other nine classes that I've made for our patients. Next, we instruct our patients on what not to do. Don't try to get your probiotic cultures from taking kombucha, kefir, and fermented foods like so many people are doing because these will all heat up your liver. And the acids formed from the fermentation process can actually kill the friendly bacteria because they're very delicate and they die off easily in the presence of acid. Don't take capsules of turmeric, garlic, flax oil, and don't even eat flax seeds. These are all very heating to both the liver and the spleen. And be very careful when you're cleaning the liver with herbs because most of them will heat the liver in the process. The worst one of all is milk thistle, which tortures your liver, as Vijay Mishra used to say, as it cleans it. It heats it up tremendously. Even many other Western and even our good Ayurvedic herbs alike heat the liver. So you have to work with a practitioner who's aware of this fact and very skilled in cleaning the liver while keeping it cool at the same time. Also, don't take loads of nutraceuticals like B-complex, vitamin C, and others, because these are the toxic versions of the real thing. And if you take too many of these, they'll definitely heat the liver as it tries to digest and detox these chemicals out of the blood. I have to treat so many of our incoming new patients who have taken loads of nutraceuticals and they've created a very toxic, hot situation in their liver. And they feel so much relief when we take them off everything and instead we honor the liver and their new protocols that we give them. So to summarize, Hashimoto's is not a disease of the thyroid gland. It's a problem instead with a misguided immune system. Therefore, all the treatments must be directed first and foremost to fixing the three parts of the immune system, the friendly bacteria in the gut, the liver, and the bone marrow. You also need to support your thyroid gland by pampering it. Don't go to bed later than 10 o'clock p.m. Eat as healthy as you can. Don't skip animal protein in the diet because the thyroid hormone is made out of animal protein. So that means if you're a vegetarian, the animal protein will come from good quality animal milk. I have a whole lecture on milk on YouTube, so listen to that. Learn how to do correct detox, making sure you don't heat up your liver. And by all means, avoid taking too many nutraceuticals and heating herbs, as well as garlic, flaxseed, milk thistle, and turmeric capsules. And keep getting your thyroid antibodies tested to make sure the levels are coming back to normal, which will let you know that your immune system is settling down its attacks. Don't just test for TSH and thyroid hormones. They won't give you the full picture. So I hope this helps all you guys out there who are suffering with Hashimoto's. At least now you know there's a better way to handle the situation. Thank you and good luck with it.